Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Government reimposes states of emergency with one additional police division. Murder figures trending higher than corresponding period in 2021. And later in sports, Mount Pleasant look to extend unbeaten start in Jamaica Premier League. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. The states of public emergency have been reimposed for the second time this month. The declaration of the enhanced security measures comes on the heels of its expiration last week after 14 days and the opposition's objection to its usage. This morning at midnight, His Excellency, the Governor General, the Most Honorable Sir Patrick Allen, declared two states of public emergency. One, in the entire parishes of St. Anne, Clarendon, St. Catherine, Kingston, and St. Andrew. And the second, uh, th this is now in the entire parishes of St. James, Westmoreland, and Hanover. Prime Minister Andrew Holness argues that the use of the SOE is justified while alluding to the country's murder figure. Additionally, preliminary police statistics show that the murders for December is down by about 50% compared to the similar period last year. But there is still a concern. The threat levels for ongoing gang conflicts, contract killings, organized robberies of businesses, hijacking of goods in transit, and various confidence scams that lead ultimately to the loss of life, spreading of fear, and depriving entire communities of their freedom to pursue their business and happiness. That threat level remains elevated and extensive in scale. Meanwhile, the country's murder tally up to this morning stood at 1,481. That's just about 1% above the corresponding figures last year. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson gave the figures at this morning's press briefing. So we've managed to do quite a bit. We know uh, yesterday we, we had none. Um, and so there have been in that period, particularly during when we had declared the state of emergency, there were a number of zero days, which of course is a significant relief even to our investigators who are not getting another file, but just a relief to the country in general uh, when we get a day like that. Um, we, this, this, this month, we are uh, tracking probably around 50% 50, 50 of what it was last year for December. In other stories, livestock farmers in St. Mary were elated this morning as they were finally supplied with feed for their animals. A hypo truck was the literal lifesaver to the farmers who were struggling to keep their animals alive due to feed shortage. A rice and flour, we have to have oil, my boss. Rice and flour, thing rough. Nothing now going on right now. You know, for I go last night, I look for you in Portland, up above me, I'm not getting none. We got a watch, we not get none. So, the crisis is everywhere. So we feel it all about. So, now that it has arrived, what do you feel? Boy, it comes like a Christmas. Me just see Christmas. Christmas just come. Christmas just come. So, I don't mind. I just can't get where I want. I don't mind, I can't get where I want. Farmers quickly crowded this agriculture shop, all hoping to buy as much as they can. But one farmer says, while grateful for this supply, it might still be a challenge for small farmers. If you don't buy a feed now, store it up like a 20 bagger, and everybody can afford it. You know, so that means that your chicken going to be dead, marga done. I don't know what to do. And I see the lot of crowd out here for feeding. And this is the last trailer coming back in, in St. Mary here. The hotel sector is working on bolstering direct links with farmers. This response from stakeholders has concerns about limited produce over the holidays and the rest of the winter season linger. Herman reports. Predial larceny, fruits and vegetables spoiling because of questionable inputs. Those are just some of the issues that have caused concern about a possible shortage of certain foods. The concern extends to the hotel industry as their demand for food will increase for the rest of the winter tourist season. President of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, JHTA, Robin Russell, says his members are working to alleviate the impact. We bring in a lot of people 
for tourism, we almost double the, the population of Jamaica. And it can be a stretch on resources if we're not properly prepared. But, you know, we've been working very closely with the linkages network to apps like Alex in, you know, really getting into the farms and seeing how we can better coordinate and, and create a seamless line of providing food. Farmers have been calling for the police to do more to stem the frequency of predial larceny and for the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, to help with premature spoilage and poor crop development. The hoteliers are in support of the calls as they acknowledge that they depend heavily on farmers. We've been pushing for Jamaican grown stuff to be sold, to be used in the hotels, and this is an initiative that we're going to continue with. Visitor arrival to the island has increased significantly with over 40,000 visitors in the first week alone. The numbers were reduced ahead of the holidays as a winter storm in North America led to hundreds of flights being cancelled. The sector is optimistic, however, that arrivals will return to optimal levels after the storm. Herman Green, TVJ News. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us. Much more stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Residents of Cave Valley in St. Anne are calling on the relevant authorities to demolish a structure which they say could cost lives if not addressed. As you'll hear in this report from Anthony Lugg, it's not the first time concerns are being raised. A disaster waiting to happen. That's how residents of Cave Valley in St. Anne describe this chimney in their community. As you can see, it is breaking from the bottom to the top. And if it falls, it's going to fall along the, the, the busy turf here. If you know, remove a water place, you know, miss, mister, a water place, you know. The 85 feet structure was once part of the sugar factory. It took smoke and fumes away from the facility. According to the JIS, it serves as a reminder of its heyday when sugar was king. But the residents, while acknowledging its history, believe it has served its time. We are asking, you know, please, we are begging, you know, please come and take it down because it doesn't serve no purpose. We don't know what it's there for. We bond come see it there. So we are asking, you know, please, we're begging, you know, please to come and take it down because it doesn't serve no purpose there. So what are we going to do? We're going to wait a time to kill someone to come and take it down? No, we don't want that. We want to come and take it down now. It's not the first time the concern is being raised about the decaying structure. According to Councillor for the Barbridge Division, Winston Brown, several complaints have been lodged to the National Heritage Trust. He believes the municipal corporation must act now. I call on the municipal corporation over and over. That is the municipal corporation responsibility to get what's to be done, whether it should to be taken down or should be repaired. We cannot wait on National Heritage Trust. If this should collapse and peep and kill people, we cannot go out there and tell them that we were waiting on National Heritage Trust. The municipal corporation is solely responsible to mitigate against disaster in the parish. But I don't think the leadership of the council know our responsibility. With danger lurking in Cave Valley, most people who live here are hoping the structure will be demolished. For Kirk Jones... Just give it a chance. Everything deserves a chance in our life. So just give it a shot, see if you can fix up. So if you can fix up, well, you, you lick it down. But to my view, you can fix. So you fix it, you can help the community. Tourists come here, build a little attraction to the year and thing, develop the year a little bit. Anthony Log, TVJ News. And for the latest in the economy, here's Cody and Barrett for the Business Minute. The Jamaican economy is expected to grow 3% in 2023, or nearly double the pace of the region. According to technocrats, this is likely as the economy benefits from recovery and sectors coming back online. The growth, however, moved slightly from initial projections of 3.3% in April by the World Economic Outlook. It still outpaces the growth of the wider Latin America and Caribbean, which is set to grow by 1.7% in 2023, down from initial projections of 2.5%.
In global economy, Chinese people have rushed to book overseas travel after Beijing announced it would reopen its borders next month. Passport applications for Chinese citizens wishing to travel internationally will resume as of January 8. It follows an announcement on Monday that ended almost three years of strict quarantine rules for arrivals. Travel sites have since reported a spike in traffic. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at multiple myeloma. So when we see a patient with back pain and some other symptoms that we suspect myeloma, what we do is, yes, we do additional blood tests, but they also must have a bone marrow examination. And so we use a needle and take some of the marrow, look at it under the microscope, and what we're looking for is this increase in plasma cells. That's the health report in primetime news at 7. And now for today's healthy living tip. Manage bone pain, be aware of unusual bleeding, take steps to avoid infections, and do not ignore fatigue. Now for a look at the top regional and international stories. The government of Barbados has pushed back the official launch of the country's upcoming licensing round for a second time. The licensing round represents an opportunity for international and local companies to gain access to Barbados' offshore acreage for future development in the emerging energy market. According to Barbados' Ministry of Energy and Business, several companies have requested additional time to evaluate the acreage and data. The government has made the decision to postpone the permit round for this short period in order to comply with those requests. Barbados will now begin the bidding process in the first quarter of 2023. On the international scene, in the United States, nearly all Southwest Airlines flights have been cancelled. Of the over 2,700 flights cancelled because of bad weather, more than 2,500 are Southwest flights. The airline's CEO, Bob Jordan, says more delays are more likely to happen this week with no announcement of when passengers would be rebooked. Some stranded travelers say they will most likely not arrive at their final destinations until after the new year. Meanwhile, the Transportation Secretary says he is committed to holding Southwest responsible for the chaos it has created. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Renata Brown will have your midday sports support.